Many cryptocurrencies realized early on that if you want high decentralization, you need to make it cheap to run nodes so more people can afford to run them themselves. However, then you come into the problem that running the network on cheap nodes limits the performance of the cryptocurrency. So the big problem everyone is trying to solve is to try and keep high decentralization whilst also being able to do high performance. Without magic, it's very difficult to increase the performance of a blockchain without also increasing the hardware requirements of the nodes. So one other way to deal with the problem is instead of trying to scale the base layer, is to build layer 2 solutions on top of the base layer that allow for high performance. There are two main types of layer 2s, rollups and state channels. Whilst Cardano is working on both types, their main focus is on state channels with the Hydra protocol, which is what this video will be going through. At a high level, state channels are where a set of users will send some state to a shared location on-chain. This state is locked in the shared location and then off-chain, users will do a bunch of transactions with each other and keep track of the new state locally. When they are done with the transactions, one of them will then settle all the changes they made to the state on-chain, which will then unlock the state again, but with the changes they have made. Currently, the Lightning Network for Bitcoin is the most used state channel protocol, but Lightning channels are limited to only two users per channel, and they are limited to mostly basic transactions. With Hydra, Cardano aims to have a state channel protocol that allows for more than two users per channel, and also allows for the same smart contract capabilities as the Cardano base layer. I'll now go through the basic procedure for a Hydra head to see how it aims to do this. To start with, a leader will decide they want to start a Hydra head, and off-chain, we'll try and get a group of people together who also want to participate. Everyone will need to be using an online computer with the Hydra node software running to take part. Firstly, all the participants will create a connection with all the other participants. They will also share the initial state they want to commit with the leader. The leader will then create a Hydra smart contract and post it on-chain. This contract will contain the initial members and the initial state they want to use, as well as the conditions to unlock the state. Participants will then send their state to the smart contract. Once all members have committed their state, the Hydra head is open and people can start transacting off-chain. In case not everyone commits, there is a condition in the smart contract that allows them to abort the head and send everyone's state back. Now, using the off-chain connection they initially made between all the participants, everyone can send transactions to each other based on the initial state they committed. They will all be running the same virtual machine as the Cardano base layer, so any type of transaction or smart contract that can be used on the base layer can also be used within the Hydra head. However, you may still have cases where two people try to spend the same UTXO. So to deal with this, in a round-robin fashion, participants will be assigned as a snapshot leader. This snapshot leader will take a snapshot of their local state and share it with the other participants. If they all agree with it, and everyone signs a multi-signature on the snapshot, all the transactions from before the snapshot can be considered final. They can also prune any old transactions from before the snapshot, if they are running short on memory. If there was a scenario where two people did try to spend the same UTXO, the snapshot leader will have decided who won in their snapshot. The group can then make potentially infinite transactions between each other, with the only real bottleneck being processing all the transactions, and they can continue for as long as everyone is online. When someone finally wants to close the head, any of the participants can post a snapshot back to the smart contract on the base layer. However, the smart contract doesn't settle the new state straight away as this person may not be honest and might be posting an earlier snapshot where they had more tokens. So instead, there is a contestation period where any of the participants can post a newer version of the state to overturn the initial state that was posted. The length of this contestation period was decided by the leader when they initially set up the smart contract. Once the contestation period is over, the Hydra head can be finalized. The state will be unlocked and the smart contract will send a new state to its owners. A big advantage of Hydra is that transactions can be considered final very quickly, as once a transaction has been included in a snapshot that has been signed by everyone, it's final and can't be taken back. As even if someone tries to close a channel using an old snapshot, you can always post the latest one during the contestation period to overturn them. The other big advantage of Hydra is that you can potentially have billions of transactions between users with only the initial opening and closing transactions being posted to the base layer. 
This means there is potentially infinite scalability, as you have potentially infinite transactions done off-chain, with the base layer only having to process a few. This is a big advantage compared to rollups. You have to post a compressed version of all the transactions processed to the base layer. However, Hydra isn't perfect and does have limitations. Firstly, Hydra requires everyone in the head to be online at all times, so that everyone can sign a multi-signature for each snapshot. If someone goes offline, snapshots can't be finalised until they return. Everyone also needs to be checking the Cardano base layer in case one of them tries to close the channel early using an old state, so then they can challenge them during the contestation period. Also, because it requires cooperation from everyone, it may be prone to trolls, who may say they want to join a Hydra head, but never commit their funds, causing everyone to waste time and transaction fees, having to close the head early and create a new one. These limitations mean Hydra heads will be more suited to tasks with fewer participants, or for a task with a short time frame, as trying to get many people to cooperate for a long period of time is always difficult. It looks like around 20 participants will be the upper bound for the number of people per head, and less than 10 being more normal. This means that Hydra doesn't seem useful for most applications that crypto is currently being used for. With DeFi apps for example, most have a giant shared liquidity pool, with funds from thousands of users that many users interact with, and there is no obvious ownership of this pool. The liquidity pool can't just be moved to a Hydra head for only a few users to interact with. Another common use case is NFTs. If you are buying an NFT, generally it's only one transaction to make the purchase. Seeing as you have to make a transaction to join a Hydra head, it's not worth using Hydra for this. Hydra suits applications where few users want to bring a set amount of money in, make a lot of transactions with each other, then settle. The example used by Cardano of a poker table is a perfect example. A small group of people bring a set amount of tokens to the table, potentially play hundreds of games where there are hundreds of transactions between each other, and then they settle at the end. The problem is that there aren't many scenarios similar to this currently. In general, the initial Hydra proposal is an excellent solution to a certain set of problems, but other improvements to Hydra, or even different solutions like rollups, which Cardano is also working on, are needed for more general scalability. There aren't many details out yet on the Hydra Tail protocol, so we will have to wait and see if this also brings more use cases as well. There have been hints from the developers that there are ways to use Hydra heads for more general purpose infrastructure, where Hydra heads will be a part of a dApps backend and normal users won't have to interact with a head directly. So there may be more use cases for the initial version as well, but at the time of this video, we are still waiting for more information on this. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to catch my future content.